Hello students, welcome back to my YouTube channel Civil Line. Myself, Milan Patel, Assistant Professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Today's topic is about building construction. This is the second lecture of this topic. In the last lecture, we have covered two topics, classification of buildings and building components. In today's lecture, we will discuss about number of types of loads acting on the building, and types of foundation. Let's start with topic number one, types of loads acting on the building. There are five types of loads which are acting on the building. First is dead load, second is live load, third is wind load, fourth is earthquake load, and fifth is rain and snow load. You can clearly see in this figure also number of types of loads acting on the building. For structure analysis and design, we have to calculate this load as per India standard code and apply this load on the model and carry out structure analysis and then design structure components. Let's start with the first type of load which is dead load. This is a untransferable, unmovable and permanent type of load. It is also called as self weight of the building. It includes self weight of walls, roof, beams, columns, footings, partition walls, fillings, water tanks, floors, etc. It is calculated by multiplying the volume of the component into the density of the component. For density, we have to refer Indian Standard Code IS 875 Part 1. This code is used for calculation of data. In this code, we have one table which is shown on the screen. By this, we can find out the overall weight of the component. This table gives density of number of types of materials like PCC have density of 24 kilometer per meter cube, RCC have 25 kilometer per meter cube, steel have 78 kilometer per meter cube, bricks have 22 kilometer per meter cube, and so on. So this is how we can calculate the self weight of each component and by addition of these all components, we can find out dead load of the building. Now, let's see the second type of the load, which is called as live load. You can clearly see on this figure also, live load is movable, temporary and variable type of load. It includes weight of inhabitants or people living in the building, furniture load and any stored material load. It is one type of changeable load, so it is called as live load. It is calculated based on the type of the building. Live load is calculated based on IS 875 part 2. In this code, we have one table like this, having minimum live load consideration. For residential building and hospital, we have to consider 24 kilometer per meter square live load, minimum. For office and small workplace, we have to consider 25 kilometer per meter square live load on each slab and so on. By this, we can find out the live load of the whole building and by that we can carry out our structure analysis and design. Next is wind load. Wind load is act differently at different places. It is calculated based on IS 875 part 3. It is considered in design in case of tall buildings having height greater than two times the width of the building. It is expressed in terms of basic wind pressure which is equivalent static pressure in the direction of wind. It is calculated by P is equal to K into V square where P is equal to wind pressure which is in kilometer per meter square. K is the coefficient depends on wind velocity, size and shape of the structure. It is basically used as 0 0.3 per 0 0.6 as per IS 875 part 3. K is varies from place to place and based on topography. V is equal to wind velocity which is in kilometer per hour which is also given in IS 875 part 3 in one table. So by this equation we can find out wind pressure at each flow and applying this pressure in the model we can uh, find out the 
overall swift or overall drift of the wind. Next type of load is earthquake load. Is basically act in the horizontal direction at the foundation level of the building. It is calculated by one equation which is m into alpha is earthquake force is also called as w by g into alpha where m is equal to mass of the building, w is equal to total weight of the building, g is equal to gravitational acceleration and alpha is equal to acceleration due to earthquake. Basically alpha is given as 0.2 g to 0.1 g. Here g is equal to gravitational acceleration. By this equation, we can find out overall earthquake load acting on the foundation level of the building. This calculation of earthquake load is based on IS 1893 2016 addition. Now, let's move to the fifth type of load, which is rain load and snow load. This both load acts on the roofs. It depends on the shape of the roof and its capacity to retain the snow and rain load. Load of snow is equal to 2.5 kg per meter square per centimeter depth of flow. You can clearly see in this video also by snow load, false slave is collapsed. So we have to consider snow load in our design of the building. For roofs greater than 50 degree slope, snow load can be neglected because snow cannot be retained on the slope roof and roofs was positioning shape and drainage system where accumulation of rain is possible rain load is also calculated and considered in our analysis and design we have to apply the snow load and roof or rain load on the terrace slab if light load is greater than then the rain load and snow load, light load is applied and if snow load and rain load is greater than light load of this slab, then rain or snow load is applied on the terrace slab. This is how this load of the building is applied on the building. That's all about types of loads acting on the building. Now we will move to our second topic which is types of foundation. Basically, foundations are classified into two broad terms which is shallow foundation and deep foundation. So what is shallow foundation and what is deep foundation? We can understand by this figure. The, here D is equal to depth of the foundation and B is equal to width of the foundation. If depth of the foundation is more than the width of the foundation, it is called as deep foundation. And if D is equal to it, or less than the width of the foundation, it is called as shallow foundation. We will Discuss the various types of shallow foundation and deep foundation in detail. Let's start with shallow foundation. Shallow foundation is divided into number of types of footing. Here, first footing is spread footing. The name itself says spread footing. Here, load is spread into the soil by geometry of the footing. So, spread footing is basically divided into number of types like single footing or pair footing, step footing and slope footing. You can clearly see number of figures and practical images of this type of footing. First is single footing. Here one pad is provided to transfer the load of column into the soil. Step type of footing. Here load is transmitted by number of steps of the footing. And slope footing. Here load is transmitted by slope. Next type of footing, square footing is wall footing and step wall footing. Here, this is the upper foundation part for column footings. Here are the foundation for walls. So, there are also two types of wall footing like single pair footings or step type of footings. And the last is drillage foundation. It is basically used in industrial type of buildings. Here, load is transmitted by number of components like if there is a steel driller foundation, load is transmitted by steel plates. Here, this is a steel type of uh, drillage foundation and this is a timber type of drillage foundation. Here, load is transmitted by number of steel beams, steel I beams and then it is transmitted to the concrete base. This blue portion is called as concrete base. So, the load of the column is transmitted to the steel plate, then to the I girders and to the uh, concrete base and to the soil. And this is a timber relay foundation. Here, instead of steel plates, we have 
timber planks you can say wooden planks so load is transmitted by wooden planks to the soil so that's all about spread footing where load is spread to the soil next is next type of shallow foundation is strap footing this type of footing is mainly used where our foundation of the column is at boundary of the building or at the front where we cannot construct our foundation to our plot one small part of the foundation is outside our boundary then and then we have to transfer the load of the footing to the another column footing by one beam which is called a straight beam so here load of this small column is transmitted by strap beam into this big column footing so we can connect this type of two footings by strap beam this is called as strap type of foundation third is combined footing where two columns are nearer to each other and if we made the footings individual then their footings are overlapped in this type of condition we have to prepare the footings of these two column combined like this here there are two types of combined footing rectangular combined footing and trapezoidal combined footing here on this screen you can see clearly the rectangular type of footing if the load on one column is comparatively less than the load on another column then the requirement of this small column for the footing is very less the cross section area of this small column is very less compared to this large column or the uh, column having more load in this type of condition we can use this trapezoidal type of footing so we can reduce the overall concrete consumption while construction of this trapezoidal type of footing so this is all about combined type of footing next type of footing is raft or mat foundation this type of footing is mainly used nowadays in commercial buildings where number of columns in building is very high in this type of condition if we make individual column footing for each columns then the cost and time is very much high in that condition if we make over on one foundation for all columns so it is easy to construct and the cost is also less compared to individual footings this is called as raft footing in which one slab is filled by concrete and a steel this is called as uh, rcc slab above that the column footing is raised or column is raised above this slab which is called as raft or mat foundation now we will move to the deep foundation where the depth of the foundation is very much high compared to the width of the foundation the only type of deep foundation nowadays used is pile foundation this pile foundation are like this load of the building is first transferred into pile cap this pile cap is made up of rcc slab okay this load on slab is transferred into the high density soil or hard soil by piles this is the concrete piles how we can make this pile we can discuss now this is how we can construct this number of piles for that we have to insert casing for that so first step is casing of the uh, pile installation second is drilling process third phase is installed reinforcement so reinforcement cage is inserted into the hole fourth after inserting reinforcement we have to pour the concrete on that so by steel and concrete we can make rcc pile like this so by this we can create or we can cast on site the pile this type of pile foundation are of four types engineering pile friction pile combined engineering pile and compaction pile let's discuss one by one first is end bearing pile here load is transmitted by hard strata of the soil so we can extend all piles to the hard strata and hard strata is resisting the load of superstructure second is friction pile here load of the superstructure is transferred or resisted by the friction of the soil which is around the piles here we cannot extend the piles to the hard strata 
Second is combined engineering and friction. This is the combination of these two. Pi is extended to the hash data and the friction of the soil and pi is also taken into consideration while designing these piles. And the last is compaction pile. Here we can create piles by one type of uh, sand is also called as vibro compaction pile where sand is used instead of concrete. So sand is formed onto the hole and vibrator is, is inserted into the ground. Because of the vibrator, sand is filled up in the compact air. This compacted sand is act as a load bearing component to resist the load of superstructure. This type of pile is called as compaction pile. Here in India, and unique pile is mainly used. That's all about types of foundation. And it is all about today's lecture. I hope you all understand these two topics, types of doors acting on the building and various types of foundation. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Civil Life. Thank you.